The NC State men's basketball team also playing Saturday night against Purdue. We bring in James Fletcher the third on three's resident bracketologist. And James, I this is what I've been wondering. So we, we're looking at Purdue and NC State, and we're talking Zach Eady and DJ Burns. But how do you think NC State will uh, attack Zach Eady? Because I don't would it just they, they've got three guys that, that kind of rotate through in the post. Who, who's going to be trying to deal with Zach Eady most of the time? Yeah, you run into an interesting discussion there because obviously DJ Burns has the strength advantage uh, where he can hopefully be able to push Zach Eady around a little bit if you're in C State, keep him out of the lane a little bit more than anyone else in college basketball has been able to, uh, using uh, his ability to just clear space uh, will be valuable for them. But is the height difference at 6'9", just too much uh, for him to overcome when he's trying to guard Zach Eady, who can just rise right over the top of him. So do you go to a Diara in that situation who maybe can use a little bit of his athleticism and, and a little bit of height advantage that he has there uh, to create a, a more favorable matchup? What you run into there, I think the the danger of having Diara is that he he will likely be using, like I said, his athleticism, which means more jumping which mm -hmm. then uh, creates more fouls. opportunities for Zach Eady to create fouls. Yes, that's that's exactly right. Uh, Zach Eady is one of the best in college basketball, one of the best that we've seen in, in quite a while at drawing those fouls down low and keeping his balance to be able to make the shot. And and ones are what you really have to avoid if you're NC State here. So it'll be an interesting discussion. I think I would probably go Burns and then uh, start with a spy where you've got – you're not double teaming him – but you're ready to blitz if he turns towards the basket and take away some of that space that he has. Well, and, and Edie, I'm trying to think, I, has Edie played anybody who weighs as much as him this yeah, season? Because Edie, Edie is over 300 pounds. Yeah. And so I don't, you, we had, because because I know, you know, it's a football show, uh, but we had Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl in, and I had him put the scout's eye on DJ Burns. Yeah. And, and Jim Nagy says if, if he didn't work as a, as a professional football scout, he would be the guy who guesses your height and weight in the circus. So DJ Burns, to a, a professional NFL scout, is 6'7", slightly over 300 pounds. Yeah. So that's a, 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 a load inside. But Zach Eady is over 300 pounds as well. Right. And so it comes down to, uh, like it comes down to in football, you know, low center of gravity. Who's going to win pushing each other around down there in the paint? And that's where I think that DJ Burns does provide them the best opportunity to slow down Zach Eady that we have seen, at least in the NCAA tournament. We know in the Big Ten, there are some big bodies there, uh, some guys who are able to push you around. I don't know if there's anyone who's in that 300-pound conversation who has that strength ratio that we've seen from DJ Burns. But, but yeah, he, he is one of the most interesting matchups against Zach Eady, just because you have to wonder, has Zach Eady been pushed around the way that DJ Burns is going to do uh, to him in that game uh, on both ends of the floor, really, because uh, Zach Eady has pretty much been able to get around the rim, grab rebounds whenever he wants on the other end of the floor, and uh, Burns is going to make that a struggle. He's going to make him work with those box outs. We, we had a question on Dear Andy yesterday about how Zach Eady gets officiated, and one thing that that stands out to me, the lack of fouls called on him, like he leaves his feet so rarely. Yes. And I, I, I was trying to explain that like the way they train officials is they're watching if you leave your feet, if you if you're not straight up and down, if you extend over the top or if you're if you're reaching in, that sort of thing. So if you are straight up and down with your feet on the floor, mm -hmm. you're probably not getting called for a foul. And that's that more than anything feels like Zach Eady's superpower in college basketball. Yeah, and that's a common misconception in basketball is that contact equals a foul. It does not. The de the defensive player has every right to the space that the offensive player has. You cannot restrict the offensive player's movement. So when Zach Eady steps in there and he is stationary in front of the rim, like you said, getting up and down is where a lot of guys get in trouble because it's so hard to jump especially off of both feet, and not move forward, backward, or side to side, which, as we know, is not legal guarding position if you are moving from point A to point B. And then you get the arms, which have to be straight up, 
which Zach Eady, more so than any other player in college basketball, has no reason to bring his arms down towards the offensive player. And sometimes, even if he does, they are not tall enough to create contact using his arms. And so what he's able to do is just stand in the way, which he has every right to that space. And so when you see contact, these players run into Zach Eady, as long as he is sliding within his uh, area and does not leave the floor and go from point A to point B, it is not a foul. It can be contact. And yes, sometimes the opposing player hits the floor uh, harder than we're used to seeing because Edie is such a big body guy, but it's not illegal. It is not illegal to stand in that space and take on contact. It is illegal to create the contact. And so when you don't have to reach in and you don't have to jump, it, it's you're not going to get called for very many fouls because that's just the way that basketball is officiated. Uh, and, and so I think it's it's hard for fans to kind of soak it in because it does look like what we see on the other end. Yeah. But those are the little intricate details that these officials are looking for, like you said. Well, let, let's move from one giant to another. You've got Donovan Klingon from UConn, seven foot two against Alabama. And this is a this is a game where if Alabama's shooting well, we are talking about we could see a team both teams in the hundreds. If, if Alabama is shooting really well, because both these teams want to play a kind of elegant flowing style on offense. Yeah, it's going to be a fun matchup. I was looking at that uh, over under there on the screen, and I'm not sure if that's going to stick because both of these teams have incredible offensive firepower. Uh, we know that UConn is the number one offense in the country. Alabama, as Nate Oates pointed out earlier this week in his press conference, was number one for a large portion of the season until Latrell Reitzel went out with an injury. Well, looks like he's going to be back this weekend. And so Alabama, according to uh, their staff, is back to what they were when they were the number one offense in the country. So we're going to see an offensive matchup here. But I think where UConn can create some separation is on the defensive end of the floor. What Donovan Klingon has been able to do, uh, taking the offensive efficiency that he gives you around the rim and then bringing to the defensive end uh, just an absolute uh, rim protection that not many people have been able to provide at the college level in, in quite some time has made this UConn team what it is and able to slow down what was the number two offense in Illinois just behind mm -hmm. UConn in the last round, we saw how that went with a 30 0 run. I said, uh, What's a little 30 nothing run yeah. between friends? <laughs> yeah, Kling, Klingon at 7 2. Like we talk about him and Edie, and maybe we'll get to see them play each other on Monday night, but he is a much twitchier player, much twitchier athlete than, than Zach Edie. This is a guy, like he's an NBA. He's, we're not, Edie's going to play in the NBA too, but like yes. we never asked a question about is Donovan Klingon an NBA guy? He is. And he just changes so much of the game when he's on the floor. Yeah, where he has raised his uh, NBA draft stock and his ability to impact the NCAA tournament the most, I think, is conditioning. His ability to go out there, and he still doesn't play a ton of minutes. He's not going to be a guy who's on the floor for, for 38, 40 minutes in the game, unless maybe we go to overtime. Uh, but he's a guy who for 20 to 30 minutes is going to come in there, and instead of the center who trails the play. He is now running with the transition offense or the transition defense. And that ability to be at the rim on either end of the floor for the majority of the possession rather than arriving after the offense gets initiated has taken this UConn team to a whole other level from its ability to move at that pace mm -hmm. and efficiently move at that pace. And even though that their pace is not one of the top in the country, what a lot of that comes down to is the sets that they run once they pull the back ball back. They want to get out and run, and then if the opportunity is not there, then they get into their offensive sets, which maybe take a little bit further into the play clock to develop than some other teams. So I, I had not thought about this until Dan Hurley brought it up yesterday. He was answering a question from, uh, from Dan Wolken from USA Today about Nate Oates. And I... I imagine that Dan Hurley sees a lot of Bob Hurley senior in NATO because NATO is 10 years ago was a high school coach in Michigan. So let's, let's hear Dan Hurley talking about NATO. Yeah. It's like, um, he, he was running 
uh, a college program in high school. Just like my dad, if you went and watched a St. Anthony, just the way the program functioned from the pregame pre meal that, that, was, uh, that my dad was literally cooking on his own, uh, to game day shoot-arounds, to film sessions, like the quality of what my dad was doing at the high school level um, was, was the quality of what the top programs in college were doing. You know, obviously based on the resources available, right? So that was the thing I noticed about Nate when we recruited at EC was like, this guy's wired different, number one. Uh, he's a different level of energy uh, about him, just the way he shows up when you meet him. And then just the way he ran his program, I went and watched them uh, before a state tournament game, uh, have one of the most detailed video scouts that you'll see. And in the back, they had spaghetti <laughs> cooking on the stove. Uh, you know, it was, you could see he was a, he was a high-level guy that just happened to be coaching in college. That, that is crazy to think about 10 years ago that, that NATO is a high school coach, Romulus, Michigan. He gets hired by Danny White to, to be the coach at Buffalo, and that takes off. But, it, James, are we watching a matchup Saturday night of the two best coaches in college basketball right now? We very well could be, and if not, probably the two coaches who are on the cusp of entering this conversation that we had at the start of the NCAA tournament as those coaches who are the faces of college basketball. The next era, once we get past uh, some of the Hall of Famers who are still in the game, I think it's these two. These are the next guys that you're looking at who can put together a resume that enters them in that conversation where year in and year out, we know no matter where they are, no matter who they're coaching, no matter what the roster looks like, we expect greatness from their programs because of the way that they structure things. He hit on it there. The way you run the program on a day-to-day -day basis, you see both of these guys are doing that in a way that uh, it breeds a, a, a environment that creates success for the assistant coaches who then go on uh, to other opportunities and for the players who go on to success either at the college level or in some cases up to the next level as professional athletes as well. Obviously, the Final Fours are going on. We talked about them. FanDuel's got the lines on those. Do you think UConn can cover again, again, again on the men's side? All they do is cover. Every game in the last year's tournament, every game so far in this year's tournament, they're an 11.5 point favorite against Alabama. Can they cover? It's, a, it's an incredible question. They're a machine. But you got to think at some point that stops. Is this the time it stops? FanDuel.com slash Staples. You sign up. You bet five. You get $200 in bonus bets. So bet $5, $200 in bonus bets. All right, James. Let us put you and me on the spot here. We'll start with the game we've been talking about, Alabama and UConn. UConn is an 11.5 point favorite. UConn has covered every spread in last year's tournament and this year's tournament. You've already given out one pick, which I like a lot. So the total on this game is 161.5. So you are talking about like an 82 to 81 game. That that's you know 80 or 82 to 80. Uh 80 81 to 79. I feel like the over feels real good on that one, the way these two teams play offense. But let's talk the spread. Can Alabama get close enough to cover this thing? or possibly even beat UConn? It feels like they can stick around. I, I think that the offense gives them that opportunity. As we know, the three-point shot is going to determine whether this is a, an opportunity for an upset or if UConn is going to play the way and, and create the margin that they have against every other team in the country. And that's no slight to Alabama at all because UConn is doing this to, like I said, the number two offense in the country behind only theirs last round so i think that it's a dangerous thing to bet against this uconn team right now what they've shown us not only this year but last year as well the margin of victory that they have i would not be picking against them to cover uh if i was in that situation all right you know what i'm gonna take alabama to cover all streaks have to end eventually uconn's ncaa tournament covering streak is at 10 right now 10. I just, it, it has to end at some point. I, I can't, I can't imagine it. Maybe they'd make it 12 
and and right. win win consecutive national titles covering all the way. But you're giving me 11 and a half points. It's a lot. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take Alabama to cover. I'm not. I'm not predicting an, a, a, a straight up Alabama victory. I'm not crazy, but I will take them to cover. Let us move to the other game: NC State and Purdue. Purdue's a nine and a half point favorite. NC State, the highest seeded team remaining in either the men's or the women's final four. Like the the NC State women are in the final four as well. They're a three seed. They're in a, a very different situation. Although they're the team, they're playing South Carolina, which is kind of the UConn. You know, the equivalent to the UConn men, but DJ Burns, DJ Horn, Diara, Middlebrooks, can they hang with Edie with if Braden Smith is hitting shots? Like, can NC State hang? You know, I I told you earlier this week I did not want to pick this game at all. I, I had no interest <laughs> in picking against NC State after what they've been able to do over the course of the last month, but. Here we are, and I'm on the spot, so I, I, I think I just have to go with Purdue. Uh, I know it's not the the fun pick, uh, but this Purdue team, all season long, they have shown it, and they're on this uh, revenge tour of sorts. I think they take one step closer to that. I, I think that Zach Eady is able to overcome whatever that, that big man combination at NC State is able to throw at him and use uh, Braden Smith to help lead them there. I'm not sure about that number. It feels feels really close to what this one's going to look like. So if I had to, if I had to, I guess I'll hedge and I'll go NC State to cover uh, since I, since I got to make a decision here and NC State just keeps burning me. You know what? This has been the NC State episode. It, it wasn't intended to be that way, but both both their teams in the final four. Roddy Jones telling me their football team is going to be the dark horse in the ACC this year. Like, I, I just feel like there's so much Wolfpack momentum. So give me NC State to win the damn thing. To just straight up win the damn thing. All right. And if you're going to give me nine and a half points, I'm, I'm taking them. You know, yeah. <laughs> give me NC State. I, I just, the, this is not a Cinderella thing. And I, I keep trying to, compare them to the Kimball Walker UConn team that did the same thing in the Big East tournament that they did in the ACC tournament. And I realize this is this is different situations because mostly because of the competition on the other side. Like that UConn yeah. team did not have to to go through a, as difficult a path as this NC State team will have had to do if they get to the national title game. But I don't know. There's something magical about this bunch. Yeah, there, there definitely is. And that's, like I said, that's why I'm so hesitant to go against them. Not only because it's the fun uh, pick to make, but also because they keep burning me. I, this, is, this is the team that over and over has uh, I've picked against and they keep on advancing to the next round, uh, whether it was the conference tournament or now. They, they've they got it figured out and you, you, you're right. You cannot treat them like a Cinderella anymore because uh, this is what they have been for over a month now. So th this is the NC state team that we are watching and uh, you, you've got to treat them like a real contender. The NC state money line on this game is plus three forty. So if you feel like it's Wolfpack weekend you, and, and, and you're right, you can, you can do pretty well for yourself. So fanduelcom slash staples, get yourself signed up first $5 bet gets you $200 in bonus bets. There's a lot to chew on with this final four. James, I cannot wait to watch. And then, We'll see you on Monday to preview a national championship game. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.